Well, I'm here with Thaddeus Williams, author of the book Confronting Injustice Without Compromising Truth. This is a phenomenal book. I was honored to be able to endorse this, this really good book. This book tackles a lot of really hot button cultural mm -hmm. topics surrounding things like gender identity, ethnicity, race, racism. And I think that some of the terms we're hearing in culture are just volatile right now. We're hearing yeah. things like whiteness, white fragility, white privilege. Uh, it seems like if you're a white male, people don't really want to hear what you have to say. And yeah. so there's, a, there's just a lot of confusion, I think, in our culture. We're hearing racism being defined as prejudice plus power sure. rather than just having a prejudice against someone because of their ethnicity or the color of their skin. Yeah. So help us entangle some of these knots. With, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just throwing a bomb right at you. So <laughs> That's you can exactly. I, I hear you talking and asking it. a question, throwing out <laughs> these terms, and what I'm actually hearing is like, Here's a landmine. Let me get that one right. Yeah. Here's another landmine. Now walk through this for us in like yes, five minutes. Please, so please do. I'm just going to trip all the landmines all at once here. Um, so you raised terms like whiteness um, and the idea that uh, to quote someone who I'll keep nameless uh, made the claim at a conference, this was two years ago, quote, whiteness is wickedness. Mm. And so there's this whole ideology that wants to describe injustice and oppression and evil by appealing to uh, a color. Mm -hmm. That's something scripture doesn't do. Right. Um, where does the term come from with that usage? Well, it comes from a white feminist liberal scholar um, by the name of Judith Katz uh, from the 1970s. You asked about uh, racism as privilege plus power, mm -hmm. uh, or excuse me, uh, prejudice plus power equals racism. Well, that comes from the early 1970s, um, a white feminist liberal uh, by the name of Patricia Biddle Patfa. Interesting. And, and you see all these terms that we're now um, being bombarded with and all of our diversity training and you see it in, in Super Bowl ads, it's in you know Gillette shaving ads, it's just everywhere. This is becoming the new conversation. Mm -hmm. you, t you take the term White fragility, that one pops up a lot. Lo and behold, a white, female, liberal, feminist, critical race theorist by the name of Robin D'Angelo. Uh, you take the idea of white privilege. That's all over our national conversation mm -hmm. right now. And lo and behold, you have a white, liberal, female. Um, I'm seeing a theme here. <laughs> you see, it's starting to yeah. emerge here. That was Peggy Mac McIntosh's term. And so here's what I find is, in a lot of these conversations, there's a sense of, well, we want to hear the black voice. We want to hear from um, BIPOC, uh, black indigenous people of color, because we've ignored that voice for too long. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, amen, let's hear all these voices, especially if they feel like they've been silenced in the church, let's hear those voices, but let's not confuse their voices with the white liberal feminist mm. voice that has really monopolized these conversations. Wow, yeah. And so in the book, I get into a lot of the, the hard facts on it, that what we often confuse as the people of color perspective just isn't. Mm. And that makes for a really bad conversation at the outset um, mm -hmm. that isn't now being framed by biblical categories, um, but by these categories that are constantly breaking people into oppressed versus oppressor groups. So we dive a lot deeper in here, but thanks for the question. Yeah, very good.